In today's video, I will actually going to waste your time, at least if you came here looking to improve yourself at the game. We are going to take a look at some operator sets in Ranked, and some operator sets in Pro League and see how they compare to each other, and maybe we are going to find something interesting. Here we have the most recent operator pick and win rate chart from Ubisoft. I am sure that a lot of you guys have already seen this, but I am still going to explain how it works so everyone can follow along for the rest of the video. Uh, this is the defender version of the graph, and as you can see it plots pick rate on the horizontal axis against wind delta on the vertical axis. Pick rate is pretty self-explanatory, and wind delta is simply the difference between the operator's win rate and the average win rate of all the defenders. So if an operator has a positive wind delta, it means that his win rate is higher than the average win rate. Ideally, every operator would be on this intersection in the middle, because it would mean that every operator is picked the same amount of times and also has the same amount of wins. Of course that's not exactly possible, but it's also not that big of a deal. So let's look at Jaeger as an example of how to read the graph. His win delta is plus 0.5%, which is better than average, and his pick rate is about 60%, which is also higher than average. Now let's get to the interesting part. The first thing I did was to transform the Ubisoft graphic into a slightly shittier version that I did myself. I had to change the proportions, but with a bit of imagination it kinda looks like the Ubisoft graph. Then I took this infographic from CHDG where they list each operator's pick and win rates based on the pro league matches of a certain time frame. And together with the ranked stats that Ubisoft released, which is this chart right here, we can directly compare ranked stats to pro league stats. And it looks like this. Yeah, it's a bit rough around the edges, but I still think that it's a pretty cool graph. So first of all some comments regarding the methodology. The data is based on EU, NA and LATAM Pro League matches from December until the end of January, so the first half of Season 9 Pro League basically. There were a total of 897 rounds played, and I only included operators that had a sample size of more than 30 rounds, which means that you can't find Kaid, Tachanka, Capcan, Frost or Kavira in this graph. The wind deltas in Pro League are a little more spread out than in Ranked, so I had to adjust the scale of the vertical axis from 3 to minus 3 to now 5 to minus 5%. Apart from that, it's exactly the same graph as the Ubisoft one. Now let's look at the attackers. First, the rank stats again. And now for the Pro League stats. For the attackers, I didn't need to exclude any operators, but since Fuse wasn't picked once and Nomad and Lion were not available, you can't find them on the graph. Again, I also increased the scale of the wind delta axis. Another important aspect is that I didn't account for operator bans. Montagna, for example, has a low 5% pick rate, but he's also the third most banned operator, so it's safe to say that his real pick rate, if you could choose freely, would be higher than 5%. Alright, with the formalities out of the way, let's get down to business and find something interesting. The first thing I want to talk about are the typical 3-speed, low-utility, solo-carry roamers in the game. So I'm talking about Alibi, Cavera, Vigil and Kinda Ella. These are their stats in ranked, and as you can see, none of them are overpicked, but I'd say that they are still quite popular, especially Vigil and Ella. Now let's look at where they end up in Pro League. As expected, they are picked a lot less often and their win rates tend to decrease. By the way, the, the win rates of Ella and Alibi are not mistakes on my part, and at least for Ella there shouldn't be any kind of sample size issues. For Alibi there might be some weird effect going on that hasn't been eliminated by the sample size yet, like maybe she's only picked on certain sides or maps that have a higher defender win rate to begin with, or maybe she's only picked by well performing teams, which would of course taint these stats. But without having access to the raw data, I can't really see anything about that. This also kind of shows that you shouldn't use these stats as some kind of law that is to be obeyed. It is better used as a hint which points you towards a certain trend. For example, the trend that quote unquote solo queue operators are not as effective in Pro League. Now, this isn't exactly something new, but it's still nice to have confirmation. Nowadays, picking a defender in Pro League is all about utility especially information-centered utility, and here Vigil, Cavera and Ella just can't compete. Also remember that Cavera has not enough games to interpret her win rate, so I left it at the average. 
Speaking of information gathering ops, let's look at how they do in Pro League. Again, ranked stats first. All of them are picked an average amount, but you can already kind of see where the win rate is trending towards, with uh, three of them being above average. And here's how they do in Pro League. All of their win rates increase a lot, and their pick rates are about the same as in ranked, with the exception of Maestro. Now, you might be a bit disappointed, because the fact that their pick rates stay the same doesn't exactly support the idea of an information meta, but what you need to keep in mind is that this graph doesn't account for ban rates. And now, guess which operators have been banned the most? As you can see, it's all information ops. 90% of all defender bans are distributed between just Mira, Echo, Maestro, Valk and Pulse. So with that in mind, it's actually pretty telling that all of them remained on the same level as in ranked. And this definitely counts as evidence for the information meta. Now, the reason I didn't show Pulse is because he doesn't fit into my narrative. Just kidding, of course, here it is. His pick rate also increases, but his win rate takes a pretty deep fall. Like with the alibi situation, I don't really have a good explanation, and for me, and probably also a lot of other people, this is a really surprising result because a lot of teams value Pulse very highly, so I don't really know how to deal with that result. Now let's look at the group of operators which sees the highest increase in pick rate compared to ranked. Castle, Smoke and Mute are all in the underpicked two weak category, with Castle having a win rate comparable to Tachanka. Now if you watch a lot of Pro League you will already see where this is headed, but Pro League teams see these three operators in an entirely different light. Smoke with a 60% increase in pick rate, interestingly still below the average win rate, Mute with a 26% increase in pick rate and a 3.4% increase in win rate, and Castle with a 10% increase in pick rate and a 3.3% increase in win rate. The reason why Smoke and Mute are picked so much more often is that, first of all, Smoke's gadget is probably the best defender gadget in the game, and Mute's is also not too bad, but I think that the main reason for their high pick rate lies in how much utility they offer with their shotguns. In Pro League, the only way you can make elaborate strats work is if you pick one or even two operators with a shotgun. And Smoke and Mute are best suited for that because they also have access to the SMG-11, which is basically a primary, even after the nerf. And Castle is the only reason why every spot on every map is potentially viable. Just imagine a Customs or Tellers defense on Border without having Castle. That would be an absolute nightmare for the defenders. The last point I want to touch on for the defense are Rook and Dog, so the low utility 3 armor ops. In rank they are quite popular, especially Dog, which is probably due to people like Kanto from G2. And you know, it, it makes sense that they are popular, because they have ACOGs, but unlike Maestro or Echo, they don't need to stay alive, so you can peek everything without having to worry about anything. Now, with low utility roamers, like Vigil or Ella being worse in Pro League, and high utility ops like Maestro, Echo, Smoke, and Mute being better in Pro League, you would expect that Rook and Dog will do worse in Pro League than in Ranked. And well, half of that is true. Their pick rates do indeed go down, but their win rates actually increase. Now, I personally am pretty surprised by the fact that Rook and Dog are in the top 4 for win rates in Pro League. And also kind of sad, because with the, with the way I model the game in my head, I never would have guessed that their win rates are that high. So it seems like a few assumptions that I have about the game are wrong. But judging by the fact that their pick rates are not that high, especially Rooks, maybe I'm not the only one who undervalues them. And to be fair, it's, it's pretty hard to tell how good Rook really is, right? With, with Valkyrie, for example, you can say, man, if, if only we had a Valk cam, then we could have killed the guy planting and we would have won the round. But with Rook, that doesn't really work, because his influence is mostly invisible. Okay, now that we have extensively talked about defense, let's have a deeper look into the attacker chart, because there are some really weird things going on. But first, let's start with something that is not very surprising. In ranked, the typical cancer ops like Glass, Ying and Blitz are evidently not very strong. Hell, even Lion has a below average win rate in ranked. But in competitive, the cancer meta is alive and kicking. Glass, Blitz and Ying have by far the highest win rates for attackers, with Ying and Blitz being literally off the charts. This, win rate, this difference in win rate might also explain why there is such a disconnect between the pro and casual community. These stats right here are taken from platinum and diamond players, 
so the top 10 or 15% of the ranked population. And there, neither Blitz nor Ying seem to be an issue. And now imagine you are a typical casual player, and you hear a pro complain about Ying, Glass and Blitz. From his perspective, these operators just aren't strong. So it seems like the pros are just whining instead of giving valid criticism. And I'm sure you could have observed the exact same thing when Blackbeard was OP, or when Montania was OP, or when Glass and Ying were super OP. Sadly, there's not too much we can do about that, but luckily Ubisoft are also listening to the pro community and are making changes that would be unnecessary if they only cared about ranked. So as someone who is involved in the pro community, I think we're on a good path. Now let's get back to the stats and let's talk about the elephant in the room. Take a look at these four operators. All of them are fairly often picked and ranked, and their win rates are very close to average. Now, if you watch a bit of Pro League, you know that these operators are very popular, mostly because of the utility they offer. And if we look at how they do in Pro League, their pick rates are definitely increasing. But look what's happening to their win rates. They are going down the gutters. Termite, Buck, Sophia and IQ are four of the seven most picked operators in Pro League, but at the same time, they are also four of the seven worst performing operators in, in Pro League. Now, if that isn't a paradox, I don't know what is. I would love to give you a nice explanation for that, but to be honest, I don't have one. This is very much a mystery to me. It's obviously not a sample size problem. I double and triple check the data I copied. And it's not like these ops are only picked in special situations where you are more likely to lose to begin with. So yeah, I don't know. If, if you have a good explanation for that, I'd love to hear it. I guess this shows that this kind of analysis should be taken with a grain of salt. And it seems like you can't really draw any productive conclusions, but these results really bug me because up until this point, everything else made a lot of sense. But then there's this dumpster fire. And you know, it, it's awfully unscientific to dismiss data just because it doesn't match your expectations. But in this case, I don't see another way. The alternative would be to consider all four of them as bad operators that hurt your chances of winning. And that just can't be right. Sorry to end the video on a weird note like that, but that's all for today. I personally am a huge nerd for statistics, so I really enjoy graphs like these and thinking about why there are differences between ranked and pro league. And well, I hope that some of you do so as well. If you want to look at the stats in peace, there are links in the description. Thanks for watching.